Those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it. And since World War II, nothing has shaped America's history with the rest of the world more than oil. It is important when it comes to the Keystone oil pipeline from Canada. So let's take a quick walk through that history. Pearl Harbor, 1941. Japan's sneak attack destroys the U.S. Sixth Fleet. Why? Because the U.S. had cut off oil exports to Japan. And with the U.S. Navy destroyed, Japan quickly captured the oil refineries in the Dutch East Indies. Same story in Europe. Hitler broke his non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union so he could take over the oil fields at Baku. And Baku, the biggest oil field, is on the other side. For Hitler's blitzkrieg war machine to run, he needed fuel and lots of it. As one historian wrote, Hitler's obsession was oil. That's also why Hitler sent his best general, Erwin Rommel, the Desert Fox, to North Africa to destroy the British forces, take control of the Suez Canal, and the Middle East oil that passed through that canal. But oil was also Rommel's downfall. He ran out of fuel at El Alamein and lost the battle for North Africa. Two years later, legendary American general George Patton could have crossed the undefended bridges across the Rhine and into Germany and ended the war a year earlier. But he too ran out of fuel. During the Second World War, America was the world's largest oil producer. America supplied 90% of the fuel used by the Allies to win that war. But by 2006, the U.S. was dangerously dependent on oil imports from the Middle East. 13 million barrels a day, 60% of America's daily consumption. Oil was also the reason the U.S. and Britain helped organize a coup d'etat in Iran and supported a military dictator, the Shah, for 25 years. The changes in Iran represent very genuine progress. All of this to preempt a military alliance between Iran and the Soviet Union and to protect NATO's supply of Middle Eastern oil. The most important resource is oil. At Abadan is one of the world's largest refineries, built to serve customers of many nations. Today, the Straits of Hormuz is the most heavily militarized sea lane in the world. Iran's Revolutionary Guard controls the North Bank, while American and British forces protect the sea lanes and the oil tankers that pass through them. China is now the second largest importer of oil in the world. And to ensure security of supply, China has doubled its defense spending with a focus on building new submarines. Now, subs aren't very good for coastal defense, but they are very good at controlling sea lanes. And that's also why China is militarizing the Malacca Straits with a missile system to protect its oil imports, 75% of which come from the Persian Gulf. And just this year, look what Putin has done in the Ukraine. Why won't France and Germany join with the U.S. and take harsher trade sanctions against Russia? Is it because the European Union counts on Russia for 39% of its imported natural gas and a third of all of its oil imports? And let's be honest, why have over 7,000 young American servicemen and women died fighting in the Middle East since 1990? Again. It's about security of supply. This is why President Obama should approve the Keystone Pipeline. Keystone will bring 830,000 barrels of Canadian oil a day to U.S. refineries. The U.S. doesn't need to be fighting wars halfway around the world to secure its oil supply. As the former governor of Montana, Brian Schweitzer, put it, you don't have to send the National Guard into Alberta. It's time to approve the Keystone Pipeline.